the school day would be safer because there wouldn't be any sports on Thursdays other than for state basketball, state track, and state uh, that sort of thing. And uh, it seems like it's that's falling to the wayside. So I just want to bring that to your attention and to everyone's attention here. Um, I think school is our number one priority, and sports are wonderful, but uh, uh, your word to us was that the four day week would be sacred and that we want to continue to do it. Do we have any other public comment before we move on? All right, at this time, I believe we have a presentation from the KC Community Orchard. And the reason we need you to use the mic is for the time out loud. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, I'm actually here, I'm Anita Bartlett. I'm here on behalf of the Powder River Conservation District. Um, We've worked with the town of KC for the last um, 18 years to be a Tree City USA. We hold the title as the smallest town in Wyoming as a Tree City USA. Um, we started that when I moved to KC and worked for the district. Um, and last year I helped Kelly Norris and the Bread of Life Food Pantry with the Community Orchard in Buffalo. And I thought that was a fantastic idea. And I first approached the town of KC because at the time, I was under the understanding that the baseball field and the existing windbreak that's down there was under the management of the school, or at the school, the town, which they told me was reverted back to the school district. <laughs> um, and so with that, I was coming to you guys to ask if we could create um, a phased community orchard in KC. Um, I have talked to Mr. Evans, the principal um, maintenance down here, and they think it's a wonderful idea. Um, we also kind of want to make it an educational program. I've talked to Mrs. Davis with the STEM class, and they're going to help me plant trees if we get it approved, um, learn about installing drip systems and why they're important, and kind of make it a living classroom. The KC Woodshop class has agreed to make me a sign if we get it established. So. I'm pretty excited to partner with the school in those ways if it goes through. Um, year one, the kind of the phase, the idea is there's a dead row of conifers down there that just in general need to come out um, as maintenance, and there's a few deciduous trees in the first row. Um, there is an existing drip line, most of it. I understand that Roxy has torn out, but there is some that still needs to come out. Um, and uh, we would remove those and then replace the drip system. Um, I installed the one up in Buffalo, and we used three-quarter inch poly pipe, two gallon an hour emitters, and then of course the fittings would go with that. The district would provide that um, uh, material, so it wouldn't be of any cost to the school district. Um, we spoke with State Forestry. They still have the fencing that they used originally around the trees in the Buffalo orchard before the permanent fence was done. We spoke to Roxy and she would prefer for maintenance to have cages as opposed to a permanent fence. Um, so we want to abide by that because she's the one that's got to mow and we need her. <laughs> um, but they've agreed to let us use that fencing. And then um, with the Tree City USA money that the town and the district has, we want to plant a Canadian red cherry tree, a Goodland apple tree, and two Macintosh apples this year. Um, and then next year we do four to five trees and then the year after that, um, four to five trees and then evaluate and see where we're at. So eventually it would look at about 15 trees down there in the existing wood break. So um, that's kind of our plan. Um, I did have them hand out. I think you got this material ahead of time. Kind of the phased plan idea, the map of the area down there. And then for the MOU, we got with Mr. Oski um, and got the MOU that you with, used with the Bread of Life Food Pantry and then basically changed everything to the Powder River Conservation District. So it is an existing MOU basically. But I would take any questions. So the questions I would have is who, who's responsible for the... Some questions I might have are who's responsible for the upkeep of it? Who blows the lines out if there's a leak or a break? Who fixes that? I don't know how tall the fencing is that they've torn out, so is it deer-proof fence that you'll be putting around the trees? 
Um, as far as maintenance, if um, Roxy will let me know if something, because she's the one who's going to be down there mowing it and seeing it, if she'll let me know, I will come up and repair the drip line. Um, we keep that stuff on hand. So maintenance of the drip line would be on the district. Um, and that's how it was done before. Um, and then it just got into excessive ill repair and we just went it out. Um, so that would be replaced. Um, the existing fencing is, if I remember correctly, it's four foot fencing um, that would go around the trees about two and a half feet out. So yes, it would be deer proof. Is that all of them? <laughs> Winterization. Um, blowing the lines out, I'm hoping when the school blows their lines out because it's down there zoned in with the baseball field that they would go ahead and blow that out for us. If not, I'm sure I could get a board member to assist me with that. So. That's going to be a commodity. Yeah. Right. Um, it is zoned in. The current drip system, I know it's on zone 10 because I talked to the maintenance. Um, for the town when they first set that up. It was established in zone 10 and it's piped into the town water system. So it is um, water that would be good for troops. So. How long would you guys continue? Um, ideally it would be permanent unless, God forbid I leave the district and then someone else takes over, but ideally it would be a permanent partnership um, where we would maintain it. There are five board members on my so conservation board, board. Say you leave. Yeah. These other board members would be. Yeah, and then they would hire someone. It would be a project, but it would, you know, right. ideally it would be a permanent collaboration between the school and the district and the town. So. Or as long as the MOU was in place, um, I think there's a renewal process every three to five years. So. Any other questions? Well, I think we have that as an action. On, so we'll on. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, at this time, do we have any additions to the agenda? I'll make a motion to accept the agenda as it is. Okay. All set to it. Mr. Oski, I need to ask if we're going to keep the. Uh, at this point in time, this board sees there is an issue. Can we just eliminate it when we get to it? Okay. So we have a second. All those in favor of the agenda as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, let's move on. Uh, reports. Mr. Austin, you're up. All right, so, Mr. Evans, you are on. And we actually, I have an amazing PLC team over here that's going to give you guys a presentation on something they've been working on for the last two years, um, and it's called ILPs. And then after that, I'll take any questions. Right here. My students always say if I turn my mic on, I just blow them out. So I'll try not to be, I'll try to be a little more soft-spoken. So um, I'm Natalie Maxwell. I teach ELA 7 through 12 um, here. I'm Victoria Davis, and I teach science, math, and STEM elementary and middle school. I'm Cassie Maya, and I teach social studies and math in the middle school. And Tristan Allen, I am K-12 special education. So also on our collaborative team, we have a high school social studies teacher, Chris Devin, and a high school science teacher. Uh, Michael Murray, they could not be here today, but all of us are on a collaborative team. So, yeah. So, so um, our collaborative teams in KC look a little bit different just because if I were on an ELA collaborative team, I would be on a team of one. So, that would not be any fun. So, we have cross curricular collaborative teams, and um, it makes it interesting and challenging but ultimately i think it makes us all a little bit stronger uh, that way and so how we kind of dial in on what we are going to do did you do that question so i'm not get on there i did not go on there so okay um so their collaborative teams have questions that we kind of look at before we start and that one of them is like 
on what do we want kids to know and be able to do? That's the big one, right? Like, what do we want them to be able to do? Um, how will we know when they can do it? Um, what will we do if they get it right away and they need to move on? And what will we do if they don't get it and we need to do some sort of remediation? So those are the questions that we can, is that, that's all of them, right? Um, so those are the questions that we look at when we go into our collaborative team. And usually this goes like by school year, but sometimes we have um, initiatives that run past that. So anyway, those are the questions. And um, kind of how we dial in is we look at a lot of different areas that we think could be stronger within our school. So, um, and it can't just be one area of curriculum, right? Because there might be uh, like a reading comprehension thing that I think kids need to work on, but that doesn't um, necessarily translate to math or science or um, SPED or any of those things. So we list things that we all sort of work on. So in the past, we've done things like um, vocabulary in context. Like if kids read words that they don't know, do they have the skills to be able to figure out what that word means? So that helps all of us. Um, so this year, we did some, we went a little bit in a different direction. We had a lot of discussions, made a big giant list of things that we could work on. And then we got rid of all of the things that um, we can't control. So homework, you can't control the kid does homework. There's um, very little we can do about that. And kind of what we dialed down to is that kids in KC when they graduate don't necessarily know all of their post-secondary options. And sometimes they don't know the why of school in general. Like why are they here? What are they, why are they in English? What are we doing? So that was what we kind of decided to tackle this year. Oh, there it is. There's the guiding question. I already did. So um, the first thing that we did is created a student survey and we created that together, decided what we wanted that to look like. Um, and some of the information on here, like how many college visits have you been on? Um, what are your career plans and what is the certainty of those plans? Like, are you 80% sure that you want to be a doctor or are you 10% sure? Um, and college visits, I should mention, doesn't just include college, that also includes technical school because a, a large part of our population will go to a trade school and we think that's awesome. So, um, And then learning likes and dislikes. And we made that anything from like, I like taking notes, I like working in groups, I want to listen to my music, I want to sit in the back, whatever you like, whatever you don't like, like we want to know. Um, another section that we put on there were, was um, adults that you trust in the building, and that could be anyone, could be a bus driver, could be a teacher, could be the custodian, whoever you trust. Because we were asking questions in our bit and MTSS process, and we would say, well, who has a good relationship with that kid? Well, we decided we should ask the kid, right? Because sometimes we might think that we do, but um, if you're going to have a hard conversation with a kid, we want the right person to be having that conversation. So that was on there, and self-identified learning strengths and weaknesses. Um, and we added a section for some kids, if they come through MTSS or the FIT process, we add a little section that is like information that would be good to know if, it's, if we have an eighth grader that's going into ninth grade. Like things that might help your ninth grade teachers um, be a better teacher to that particular kid. So we did the student surveys. And yeah. And you guys have one, I think. You have an ILP up there, so you can look at that. So to make sure we had a well-rounded amount of information, we also included their data from their um, white top and the fast bridge testing. So we have a two-sided ILP. That way when we're looking at a kid or if we're in MTSS, we have all that information right at our fingertips. We can, and right now we're tracking fifth grade through 11th or when they're done testing. So we have all that data for math, ELA, and science consecutive up over those years. We can use all of that information so we can have a well-rounded amount of information to make that student successful. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, okay. All right, so this is 
my favorite part of the ILPs is that we can actually use them. Um, in education, sometimes we get lost in the paperwork and making pretty pictures, but these are really useful. Um, they can drive the curriculum. So actually, this summer, I'm planning on sitting down with ILPs and going through and using them to drive my instruction next year so that it's focused in interest areas so we can really hook those kids. Um, we've mentioned we use it in the MTSS process all the time. It's very, so every two weeks we're pulling out an ILP to see what the relationships are uh, like. We can also use this to build relationships, um, especially quiet kids. You don't always know what they're interested in. And so if we have that little bit of information, we can go look and maybe hook them. And then um, we're moving our collaborative team beyond these ILPs to address other students. So we have really looked at um, the next steps. This, is, this has been a planning process. We've worked together for several years on this, and it's kind of neat to see these ILPs come to fruition. Um, we're really looking now at some of that aspect of what kind of career readiness are we giving them? What kind of post-secondary opportunities do our kids know that are out there? And so right now, we're really excited because we will be taking a field trip down to Wyotech and UW, um, not necessarily pushing a specific college, but so that our kids know what opportunities are out there, they know what is available to them, whether this is a college or certificate route or what kind of um, career opportunities are there. Um, the next steps in our ultimate dream is that we would have that on a five-year rotation. So this year's Laramie, um, in the future, maybe it would be more headed north. So. Sheridan College, Billings, there's a few others around that direction, or headed over towards Rapid City, things like that. Um, and then of course, the next step is, we love to start that collaboration with the community and other businesses to be able to have our students do some job shadows. Um, to know, is this, is this really a functional thing for my life? Or maybe that's not really what I thought the job was cracked up to be. Um, and being able to start those collaborations um, not just with us as a school, but also for our students to know what opportunities are out there and what doors are open to them. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Do you guys have any questions for my report? I'm not so Good evening. So, Madam Chair, uh, any questions for Gib about the high school? Ryan is not able to attend this evening, so uh, he can take questions. It's not really a question, but more of a statement, my thoughts, and I just had it right here. It's uh, having to do with our, uh, which is, uh, our speech today at BHS. Uh, first of all, I thought Mr. Mayor did a really nice job on his presentation, I really, and I really appreciate having the GPAs included in there. But I'd like to just point out to the board of uh, Again, you all know that we are going to lose Mr. Farwell, and uh, he's been here for decades. He's uh, being selected as the PA coach of the year. Uh, his wife, Emily, if you've never met Emily, she's a real outstanding person. And she earned her second Diamond Coaching Award. I'm not sure if it's a higher award, but I think a Diamond is the highest that you can I believe you're right. And she's been for years a strictly volunteer, am I not correct? And she's at every practice. Travels and uh, we are going to miss, miss them. And then uh, Mr. and Mrs. Farwell have accumulated over 38 national level awards and honors. Is that for your students? Yes. That is fantastic. Yes. 38 is. national uh, uh, award 
Yes. Yeah, they've been very successful. Yes, so Absolutely. Uh, if you could pass that along. I would be happy to. Thank me, you. Uh, I would really appreciate that. Absolutely. Anybody else? Jim, I thought your, your uh, presentation was awesome, especially the timeline and what was happening. Thank you for that. Good. Um, I mean, that, of course, is, is part of the reason for providing it to me to let you know what's going on with the DHS and the welfare community time. excited to get outside. <laughs> We've had lots of soccer and lots of track kids in the school and trying to make the most of practice, so that's a big thing. Um, this is kind of crunch time after spring break. I feel like in two weeks, we got two full weeks of school and then we have a week of our, we do, we dedicate a whole week to white top testing. So this is big time and crunch and it was nice to see everybody back with smiles on their faces and ready to go. Oh, I'll tell you, it is, yeah, in the halls and everything, it's tough because you're not used to kids running in the hall, it just feels wrong. <laughs> when they're running in the halls, it still feels wrong. So, but no, they are making the most of it and really, uh, the coaches have worked great together to kind of devise a, a schedule that still gets kids home by five o'clock at night and, and it gets everybody kind of stretching their legs and practicing, but yeah, it is difficult for sure, for sure. Mention. Yeah, they use that and tie it to so, you know, it's really a cross curricular thing. They, there's not a class that they have during the day that doesn't tie to those box sled races, and they're motivated for it. And this was a great year because we had good snow that we could get out and run them. Because if you remember, it's been, there's been years where that hasn't been the case, so it's, it's not nearly as fun running them in dirt and sagebrush. <laughs> April 27th, we have our Wild Town interviews. So if you've got that invite, please accept. Um, I think it's like 1 or 2 30. So um, yeah, that'd be what's coming up. Yeah. Casey comes down and joins us for that. Um, I don't want to talk a lot about the new Battle of the Books, but I will congratulate Casey for her race. <laughs> Three years from us. <laughs> We're trying to figure out a way we can stop the fight. Big incentive. That's the amazing teachers. Yeah. Well, no, it was kids. I didn't see any, any teachers down there. Because we're up three points, and I'm thinking, we got this. I was even maybe trash talking to some of my staff as we were doing it. All right. So, no, it was fun. It's a good day. So, there are three P's? Three P, yeah. So, um, yeah. That's where we'll leave it. <laughs> yeah, no, you're good. Anything else? No. Any questions? Dr. Pierce, I meant to mention about the spelling bee. You had a student make a bird? Yes, yes. We had a great, a great showing at our local one, which is super fun. And again, Casey comes in and takes part in that. And then at the state level, we hear Titanic. So, Pretty exciting, very exciting. It's a tough word to miss that one. <laughs> I know, gosh, I'm out like the second round when I play at home. <laughs> yeah, really good, really good. Thank you. Mr. Rowski? All right, Lori, you're up. Well, any questions on the report? Anything you would just like to 
I think what the highlight for us is we screened 56 kindergartner, you know, two days of screening, which is pretty solid. And then having our 18 uh, junior K with you know, the 74 count cohort coming in next year. The interesting thing about that 56 screen is about half um, are either qualifying or parent requested for a peer review program. So that's super exciting that that program is uh, catching fire. Parents are really excited to have that built on the year for student girls. So, different look for us. We got to think outside the box on addressing that. So, kind of fun stuff. And we've had several calls today on kids who didn't get screened. Probably didn't have to pick up another day for cleanup. So, a lot of problems to look at. What did you say the total was? Right now, we're seeing it's 74. So but right. there's a chunk of those that were okay, and a larger chunk than normal. It was really great to hear Natalie talking about um, helping students understand what their post-secondary options are. And that's the idea uh, between uh, bringing somebody like Porter back. Um, anytime a student texts me and says, hey, I'm passing through town, I'd like to say hello. I said, can you say hello and say hello to my students too? And, and just no matter who they are, what are you up to? And it just happened to be the, the case that Porter just finished up. Uh, Coast Guard rescue swimmer training, which is a very elite thing to do. Um, and uh, not only that, but uh, he came in and, and talked with the students about uh, how he arrived at that place. So the goals that he's had for himself over the years, and just he's a very positive young person. Um, I want to say kid, because it makes me feel younger if I do, but um, a very positive young man, and talk about those experiences, how he got to where he's at now is spectacular. Uh, we, we preserve a half hour in the morning for opportunities like that. Um, tomorrow, Chris Brzezinski is coming in to talk about something super exciting that you can do after high school, uh, which is investing. Um, so uh, he'll, be, he'll be chatting with the students about that. Uh, so, so whatever we can think of, um, totally agree with y'all. I mean, if kids don't know what their options are, then they can't really dream about it. So we're just giving them some, some new ideas. Don't know, you don't know. Thank you for that question. How many numbers did you have turn out for information? I thought the circle sounded a little excited. Yeah, we have a full room. Uh, I think there was about a dozen families represented there. And the exciting thing is we haven't had applications in March before, and right now I've got more applications than I've got spots for the fall. So it's exciting and it's a challenging opportunity. So what will we do? I will use uh, I will use my positive mental attitude, and and uh, we will we will figure out a, the best way to serve all of those families in the Johnson County School District. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any questions for me? For the superintendent's report. Mr. Oski, I'd like to ask a question. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, I'll be honest with you, we were one of the schools that got the prank call, um, as we call it. Uh, the way law enforcement responded um, and went to the building and kind of how we went through some things, the debrief afterwards, absolutely, there were some things that came out of it. I guess to summarize it the best is uh, the Sheriff's Department says, um, false call, it was a training they know what they need to do better we know there were some channels of communication that got missed 
So we fixed that. Um, Mr. Zink was able to come and address some of the issues with the keys um, that we couldn't have. <clears throat> but I'll tell you the one thing that came out of it, they were very grateful for the tack one training that they'd had with law enforcement. Um, how they entered the building, their approach to it, um, it was seamless. They knew what they had done. They made the comment that if we hadn't had that training, there would have been a lot of hesitation. So that collaborative piece between the school district, law enforcement, knowing the buildings, what can come out of that. Um, we're looking at trying to put a, uh, give them access to our exterior cameras. So in emergencies, they would have access to it. So they're monitoring um, some of those situations. So their people are safe, our people are safe, and kind of go from there. It is a topic on our agenda tomorrow for administrative teams so that they can learn, learn about it. Um, on break, but I guess if there's a fortunate thing, we weren't like a lot of schools in the nation and in the state of Wyoming that were in school, so we were able to learn from these things, um, and I think uh, we don't ever want it to happen, but we're definitely stronger than where we were at 8 o'clock that morning. Fair? I'm not going to give you an answer because they didn't give me an answer. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, it was a, it definitely wasn't a solid English. It was a maybe a computer generated one that went out to 911 calls. So. Did you want to say anything about the uh, key Yeah, so some exciting things. Well, first of all, welcome back um, after Easter break. Hopefully, everybody had a good one. but. Uh, one of our celebrations district-wide stakeholder meeting with our parent liaison will be Thursday. So we're going to talk about that. It's been an entire year um, be able to look at the data piece of that. So there is that celebration. Uh, we are wrapping up the end of the year. Uh, not only are we, it's nice outside. Um, Charles will say he hasn't had to get up um, past Wednesday at 3 o'clock in the morning. Jake and have a conversation about whether we're closing row or school or what we're doing. So the weather's getting nicer. Um, spring is here. Graduation's around the corner. That means we've completed an entire year. We have our state assessments coming up. So we are on the downhill slope and it's gonna be a very quick ride until the end of the year. So with that, there's a lot of work that's been put in in this district to get to this point. So I appreciate the team um, and a lot of challenges that we have in getting ready for next year. That's our biggest goal at the district level. That was Thursday. What other Thursday are we talking about? That's the parent liaison meeting at one o'clock. Yep. I think so. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. There's lots of meetings, Jan. So if I missed another one, I'll let you know. All right. With that, we'll go. What the recruiting document? What does that? Okay, so we're in the second phase of that. So looking at uh, what has never happened, what a transition is actually putting a, a show together to get on the road to recruit teachers. So you've seen the first phase, second page is coming in draft form. Uh, Dr. Hansen and uh, Mr. Anderson attended uh, the last teacher fair. We're gonna try to get into a rotation um, where we go to teacher fairs and then we're actually gonna set up a table. We've got actually some displays ordered We'll put a pamphlet together. Um, my goal is to create a video. Um, so that's just the next stage of what that looks like as we start recruiting and being a part of the, what I call it, the recruiting um, road trips that need to go around. So we'll decide what that looks like starting for next year. So with that, facilities is watching a soccer game. So if you have any questions that I can pass on to Mr. Zink, I would do that.
um, and graduation coming up. Been to many graduations in Buffalo High School. That place is packed. Um, I don't think we have a plan going for elderly, um, special needs. Yeah, we do have some thoughts a around plan that. Maybe to put out like sooner yeah. rather than later. Yeah. Do you have do you have a plan? Well, we're certainly working on a plan. Um, we do have the ground level entrance around the back of the gym, so we'll be using that. Um, we will be escorted until the end with the assistance. So we are wrapping our, our heads around making sure that we can get everybody who wants to attend. I know you probably have meetings with like senior parents and just to like get that information out to them, like not the week of graduation right. or the Saturday night before or whatever, but like I'm talking way in advance, like now. Yeah, we will. As soon as possible, yeah. just, just so they understand no. that you're not, you guys aren't scrambling the day of graduation Absolutely. trying to figure out all right so ricky is not able to attend tonight too so i will take any questions in reference to her so with that i'll turn it over to christy any questions for christy are changing up this year is through our federal grants and so your private schools your home schools qualify for a certain percentage of your title one funds so that's where that funding is coming from so um, we've uh, had first-time meetings this year we've been meeting with those entities they qualify for a certain amount um, and we've been working with our favorite person less um, and what we can and can't do um, I want to give a lot of credit to Craig and Lori for their work on all the title one stuff that we have been doing, but that's just part of the normal grant process that really hasn't been done in the past that we're doing now. So that's where some of this funding is coming from and that's why we're doing it. However, there are computers. When they were done, they will come back to JCSB. Do they purchase like, um, at the like municipal level, do they do their insurance just like the that's, that's not in our realm. That's oh. under their realm. So they can't do that on their side. That's their deal. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. Christy, will you be having a group uh, at the time your past high school kids will come help you in the summer? Yes, um, we have, I think, four already. We're just ready to see if they come from last year. Do they apply or uh, do you get the ones from last year? They Okay. I think that's all we can hire this year. That's all we can hire the fifth one that's in Mark Bell. I think that's the right one for it. And they are going to be able to get clean computers. Set up Chromebooks, um, help us uh, get all the rooms set up. Because summer is just a really busy time for us. It's all like I said, it's going to take everything out of the rooms. We have to go through everything back and trick it up, make sure everything works. Um, we have to go through all the Chromebooks, um, get them all assigned. But Everything in ninth grade, the kindergarten, they get their Chromebooks set up at that time. Um, or just like placing devices, so they can take the, the old ones out and just push them. Any Replaced uh, 11 windshields. So they broke them or just replaced them? 
we are replacing those because they have a crack of four inches or more. We cannot all the students with that. The reason I brought that fun number to you is we traveled 10,288 miles this last month on activities. As you well know, the roads are sanded when the weather is inclement. So with that sanding, that aggregate causes a lot of broken windshields. So we did replace 11 school bus windshields this last month. So Phil, just a comment, because uh, I don't see them. So they get on holes and burgers before stepping up and things like that, right? The buses. Yes, yes, very much. We're super excited. I got to spend the day this afternoon with the Burr family. Uh, Jay and Steph have numerous years of experience driving in Claremont, Sheridan County School District 3. Uh, they do not have school on Fridays or Saturdays, and they have some limited activities in Claremont, so they're able to come over, help us out, uh, you add their years of experience, and we're able to work them in. As far as Ed goes, he was our special needs driver for several years. He uh, moved back into a substitute role uh, took some time for him and his wife to do some traveling because she was recently retired from our district. And he's now back in town and he's going to help us out. As a matter of fact, the substitute driver tomorrow evening for one of our activity route drivers who's going to take an activity. So uh, another comment I'd like to make is I got to spend some time this last week down here in KC because we were on spring break in Buffalo. So I got to spend a morning traveling the routes in KC uh, and assessing some of the needs the KC Transportation has, I was pleasantly surprised and impressed by the overall behavior of the students on the buses. And that needs to be committed to, first of all, the students, if you could relay that back to them, as well as the drivers for reinforcing that. Uh, the buses were extremely clean, picked up, the students all wore their seatbelts, uh, acted appropriately, and you know, coming from larger numbers up in, in the, the Buffalo metro area to coming to some of this urban, or excuse me, rural out here, it was it was nice. The kids were really nice, really thankful for the drivers, spoke to us. So it was a breath of fresh air, and we were super excited to be a part of that. We did see some needs that KC has. Um, we talked with Jake a little bit about that, and we're moving forward with getting those established. So we're super excited to be a part of that. One last question, Bill, and I hope this is an appropriate time to ask. So we're going to discuss the Kinder Boost program, and of course, you're going to be involved in that with some transportation. So the parents are going to bring the kids to there, and then are you going to have to run a bus early to take those kids home, or will they go home with the students from the school? So we have not discussed that at this point. So we will look at that to make sure that it works. You bear in mind that we are going to have to probably double up on a little bit of that to get those students transported due to our staff and the staff shortage shortages that we currently have. So but that is something we're definitely working on. Another thing with that kinder program, uh, we're gonna have some open houses at the transportation department so that we can work with those pre-K kids that want to come up and experience what the school bus is so that the first day is not quite as shocking for mom or dad as it is the students. So we're excited about that. I think Mr. Evans covered that pretty well. He's got some Any other questions? Well, you're in your field trip season? Yes, we are entering the field trip season as well as the rescheduling spring sports season. <laughs> and uh, I might foreshadow that there could be some bad news from time to time for some of those events because we just, we're, we're doing our best right now. Mother Nature has helped us cancel some of those trips, but uh, we hope to not have to cancel any trips. We hope to facilitate everybody's needs, but the reality is we may not have enough buses or drivers with the rescheduling that is going to occur. So we will look at that as our team with our act activity directors and our principals and determine what is, if we have to make what cuts, what is most appropriate. But as of this point, we're still covering it. We still are making it happen, so. Now, Bill, the reality is there, there's a potential of us having a meeting and reducing the number of activities and reducing the number of students. 
Yes, uh, a perfect yeah, example of that is Bill FGBQ. Bill Gates is positive, but I just want to be as honest as we can. He said this meeting today, and <clears> that didn't mean tomorrow, that there is a strong potential, high potential, that we're going to have to sit down and have hard conversations about what we can support and not support because the spring is packed. Okay, so that we're going to be doing some prioritizing here. And now, we have former employees of mine from Sheriff Creek helping. We have new people coming in, but it's still, there is an overwhelming. We've seen there's 10,000 miles we covered this last month, and that's probably not even a comparison to what we're going to see in the next, in the next coming up. So, there's a lot of hard decisions to have to be made. You know, I would point out the like the 95 kids that are involved in middle school track. What a wonderful number. But how many buses does it take to take 95 kids somewhere? So that doubles up the buses even for that one activity. You may think of track, there's two buses, soccer, two buses, any of those. So that is also a challenge as well. And don't look at the weather. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. So, you were up. Yes. Yeah. Any questions for me? Madam Chair, Mr. Miller, so you guys started the White Fox campaign in April here. Why are you just directing that you will get the results of that? It's data season time in May, so we have to see what, they're actually pretty, they're live, they're just not official. So we'll have enough time and information to share that data with our principals and our teachers so they can pre-plan, even you know, already know our equity kids, they already know their high-performing kids, but they want to put them in a higher level you know, math or, or language arts class. It's, like your, uh, it, it's nice, and so we'll have a lot of data crunching here in May, so it's the most exciting time of the year. So can we emphasize they're official and unofficial? They are very unofficial. So very unofficial. So as far as for the public to see, there's a process where you have to go through, you have to certify the data. So I don't want people to assume it's going to be public knowledge in May, but the schools will have um, information to start making good decisions, but we want to see official data. Um, there's been years where it's been a couple months because there's been a screw up and they have to go back and fix it. But just want to make it very clear, unofficial data we will have in May. Okay. I have a question. You have the, the course creation process. Yes. What, what do you use before? Because you created a lot of courses. What, what do you use? Yeah, that's a great question. I have no idea what we use. We just didn't have a process where it went through the superintendent and it never got to the board for approval. So this is a checks and balances to help promote that course creation. So we make sure we fund it correctly, we make sure everything's in alignment, we have the, the proper budgeting, and it goes through the proper channel so we know exactly what we're getting ourselves ready for in the next school year. Working with give on the right dates to make sure, especially some more for high school courses, um, some middle school courses, but we want to make sure once those courses are approved that there's enough time for those courses to be approved so they can be in the calendar and into their course book so the students can actually you know, register for those courses. So that's that whole plan. There's a whole calendar there just to, just to make sure it's, it's, I guess, fair for everybody so we all know you need to be going in the fall if you want to have a course for the following year. It takes some time to get that all in order. You just can't just snap your fingers and, oh, here's a course. So it takes a lot of planning and some time, and we want to make sure there's interest for you know, students taking that course as well. So there's some step-by-step -step that we need to follow. But it's more fair for the superintendent as well as the board to see exactly what's going on and to approve it. But since the couple, last couple years, we haven't seen any of those approval of courses. So this is just following policy and to make sure that we're following what you guys want. So, and it's just following board policy, and that's all we're trying to do. So, we have to have the data. So, right. So, there's course approval, and if they want to tap the way approved, we have to. 
So these are these are efficiencies. So just instead of creating your skin codes that have to go with this, which is tied to a teacher certification. So when you offer a class, there's a code tied to it, which then the teacher that teaches has to go through that process where you come back and they're not certified to teach this class. So it kind of cleans up the whole system of having this course approval with where we're at. And then if they want to go beyond that and it wants to be Hathaway approved, then you got to submit this to the state to make sure it's a Hathaway approved course um, with that. So it's just a process that should come all the way through the board. It, it's part of our budgeting process. When we add or subtract classes, it, the, there's just a lot of coding. So when you submit a class and a class roster and a teacher, and they have their wiser ID with their certification along with the class, and they're not certified to teach this class, but yet you give them a credit, then we end up paying money back. So this kind of cleans up the system of knowing where we're at, how we do it. Um, it's, it's advanced planning, I'm gonna be honest with you. It's not just, hey, we wanna create a class. We've gotta create a class in advance so we can help with the budgeting, so we can help with the reporting. So it, it, it can be a lengthy process at this point. However, it is different than virtual courses that you have to get approved by the state. So that's a whole, I don't wanna complicate it, but that's a whole nother basket of goods if you're gonna do that and you want virtual courses. But for these regular courses, it's coming, it's creating a process that slows it down so we meet the needs of the kids, the, the credits are accountable, but more important, the teacher's certified to teach it and it just kind of gives you as a board an understanding of what we're doing. Fair? So we won't have any new courses for next year? This, uh, this transition is being introduced to you now. I'm gonna say there are new courses, but we've been behind the eight ball starting next year. This is a process that nothing will be accepted unless it goes through the process. Fair? Well, it's just like adding a sport. You can't just add a sport for the whole year. Add an activity. Thank you. right now is professional development so we had um, an expert come in and help us with our transitions at high school um, she spent a whole week with us worked um, together with teachers paraprofessionals um, specialists to help us um, make our transitions better um, and make sure that we're really truly meeting the needs of all of the students um, high needs or not um, I also had um, someone come in, an expert in behavior, and she did an evaluation of our seed program um, and had a lot of good um, insight for us, ways that we can improve, and so our team will start working on those things. Um, I'm getting ready, the a team is coming with me to um, LRP, and that is a huge special law conference. Um, I'm hoping to bring some um, if I can't do it in person, at least virtual um, professional development back from that. Um, I'm hoping to have an academy this summer so that we can pick up some of that training in the summer so that it's ready for next school year. Any questions? That is up to you guys because you're going to vote on a special meeting and I have the information in that slide on board docs, so it's up to you guys when you want to discuss the insurance or if you even want to discuss. You had a very good board Thank you. We had a lot of help um, 
We had uh, great support. Kelly Glack Kelly really helped us uh, put together some information. Uh, uh, Leanne and Schimmel helped us too with some ideas and we kind of kept digging and digging uh, until we came up with what we thought was a really good proposal. So we had a lot of help. Madam right, Chair, sure. that's all you have to down about steel you know, leaders that put money in the HSA accounts. I'm very square that in terms of how much money you need to put in the HSA for some of the real estate money that you have yet to receive. I, I don't know no, know. we've received it, we just haven't spent it. We've, we, re we, re we have received our last installment of about $333,000, and then we're going to use a little bit of extra money to do the incentives to, and to cover that little bit of shortfall that we have. So, so some employees have already contributed to their to their HSA, and so if the three thousand dollars would put them over uh, their their limit of what they can uh, deposit in there, we will deposit what we can, maybe stock their uh, contributions, and if there's still some left over, January one or that first week of January, we'll we'll. Uh, Deposit the rest of it, so they'll get it all. But we'll just be real careful with the math. And I thought that video of the uh, last It was fun. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, so we did meet, finally. Uh, we pretty much finalized the uh, online website application that everyone goes through, and then um, the Buffalo Golf Course did finally get their um, grant money that they applied for last year. We just gave that to them, but um, the website looks pretty cool, and it looks like a pretty easy process. Again, the application deadline is the 30th, and hopefully, I think we only have received one so far, but I'm guessing we'll get more here very soon. And for BOCES, uh, they are in the process of uh, looking for a new business manager, and I think that's the big item right now for that group. So. Okay, so on BOCES, we have not had a meeting, so there's nothing new to report. Okay, if everybody could look at a second for uh, personnel on leadership governance. And we are talking about personnel. Um, as you can see, number one, the board will employ and evaluate the superintendent. I think right now we are in the process that will happen in June, at the June meeting or during that time, Mr. Oski, am I right? You're correct. And we're in the process still of developing a new um, Evaluation tool. Do we have one? We're working on it. You have, you have the tool we're creating the document. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. Um, the board will participate in disciplining uh, district employees only when required by law. Uh, if you have any questions on the ones going down, um, this one's a, always a tough one for us. The board will adhere to the district chain of communication in dealing with personnel complaints or concerns. Um, that's really hard sometimes for people to understand. We want them to go to the principal first, or actually if it's a, activities, you go to the coach and the AD, and then the principal, and then Mr. Roski. Um, that's very important for us to, to adhere to. And number six, the board will act on personnel matters only after consideration of the superintendent's recommendation. That he is the one who will recommend to us to be hired. And we will, he is our employee. He is our only employee of the board. Any questions on that or comments, I guess I should say? Down below it has the superintendent. Um, and as you notice, we just finished doing the uh, redoing all the job descriptions. Mr. 
OSCE, those are now all updated as far as law and. So, job descriptions, uh, contracts have been evaluated, but the salary schedule is what we worked on, but the job descriptions have been evaluated, but we have not pushed them out to staff and brought it to you as an official board yet. It's been a couple of years. Number six, I know Mr. Oski has spent a great deal of time on this. The superintendent will evaluate administrators. You want to just say a comment to? Yeah, so uh, you'll see in my board, in my presentations, you as a board of trustees and the public can look at it. There's a summary from what Craft Consulting is doing. We're in the process of um, developing a new administrator evaluation system. There's one that we're still using. Um, it's not really based on Wyoming state standards, so we need compliance. The new one is. Um, it's, it's being developed and will be um, in place for next year, so that's part of the report if you want to see that. It goes right in conjunction to what we're doing with the teacher evaluation and growth model, um, which is the Charlotte Danielson model. So we're trying to parallel some of those things. Um, we've added some different components. That's the trainings. Um, we had a lot of trainings this year uh, in development of that. So those are two that will kick off next year. And in addition to that, we will be pushing uh, all of our evaluation systems to teachers and administrators to the front line. So it's going to be a digital platform, which allows that to be more secure um, and be able to monitor for what we are doing. So we are updating to the new version of Charlotte Dancing to summarize that. We are creating a uh, principal's evaluation system based on Wyoming State standards. So there's been a lot of work this year to push and pull the evaluation system. And if you look at number seven, we're in the, like I said, the season of hiring and the superintendent will report to the board when employees are placed on an improvement plan. Any comments, Mr. Goski, do you have any uh, comments on the superintendent portion of leadership governance? No, I mean, those are, those are the responsibilities. Obviously, personnel issues are not public comment issues, so their executive or as a leader. Anyone else? Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? Second. Uh, discussion. I would like to just say under employment that uh, Casey, you are losing your uh, head cook after 18 years. Um, that's a lot of lunches and breakfast, so I know she will be missed. Judy. Anything else? Okay, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda as presented, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is approved. Okay, we're going to move on to our action items. We have a bunch. Again, these are all second reading. Um, they passed all last time. None of them went back, did they? Or, okay. All right, so let's start with the first one. May I have a motion to approve the policy EC, Building Grounds Property Management? So moved. We have a second, please. Any discussion? All those of approving policy EC signify by saying aye. Opposed, same sign. Policy is approved. We have a motion to approve policy ECA, security. Second. Discussion? Mr. Chair, my discussion today is on the fog from the Dave Charles view. So we, uh, it, it was before where when somebody got in the building with a fog, they knew who it was. Is that technology still available? That. Yeah, but we are shifting to try to go to one platform to do there. I'm sorry. Um, so, absolutely. But we have some failing systems, so we're, we're trying to move to Ricotta. Um, so, we have the same door systems district wide as far as tracking um, and letting people in and out with what those fogs are. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
And Dave just commented on that, that Bob's so the tracking system is really awesome because you can tell, again, who's, so you what time they were in the building, when they left, and it's really good. And we did that because there was a damage to the building when supervisor uh, and the tool was and so it's a great yeah. tool. So, Jan, I'll make the motion to approve policy EC80 security. It's been approved. Uh, yeah, motion oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So all those in favor of policy ECA signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Policy is approved. <coughs> motion to approve policy ECB. Uh, buildings, grounds, and maintenance. Second. Discussion? Again, we had discussion, great discussion on all these policies at the last meeting. So, no discussion. Uh, all those in favor of policy ECB signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Policy has been approved. Motion to approve policy DJ, procurement policy and procedures. So moved. Yes. Second. Any dis further discussion? This has been a tough one. Connie, thank you. Yeah, and so for Dan, I'm being able to be approved by the one Okay, uh, all those in favor of policy DJ signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Policy is approved. Motion to approve GDEA, Staff Ethics Conflict of Interest. So moved. You have a second, please? Okay, thank you. Any discussion? would be on the ethics spell. Do the employees of the district receive something on the, their, their code of ethics is what you want? How do they know that? So we will have to annually go over this with all supervisors about what is being part of that process. Sorry. So um, this is part of our corrective action plan. So part of our corrective action plan is to annually go over with supervisors um, to make sure there's no um, conflict of interest, there's an ethical thing. So this is something we'll have to sign off with annually and talk about this with this new policy so that everybody understands what that process is. You know, one time, Charles, I read, uh, I read about the code of ethics that you suspect for the employees. So the code of, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, so we brought in uh, a guest speaker and we talked about the educational code of ethics. So that's kind of about that platform that we talk about, that we're the only profession that doesn't have a professional code of ethics. So tying that to the, student, to the handbook, um, to our coach's handbook, those are things that we're trying to incorporate in our staff handbook and our um, coach's handbook, activity handbook. This here is part of procurement and, and some of the other processes where we talk to make sure there's basically everybody's aware that if they have any tie to a bid that they can't do that process okay but that's a great question because it was two different things those questions came up quite a bit during our policy meeting uh, same kinds of questions from from staff members well does this count does that count what, what is this and so that led to well that's covered in this policy and so those will be ones that Thanks. Yeah, the journey's not over, just to summarize it, but we're well on our way. Any other questions? Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of approving policy GBEA signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, right. same sign. Policy has been approved. Our last one is we have a motion to delete policy D J G. These are hard to say fast three times. Uh, the vending relations. You have, a, so moved. you have a second, please? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor to delete policy D J G. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. 
And again, these are policies we're just not just passing. We had great discussion on all of them last at the last board meeting. So um, these are now all confirmed as and been approved as policy. Okay, the next one is a on first reading. It has to do with our student absences. We have a motion to approve policy G, excuse me, J H R student absences and excuses. Second? Oh, would you like just to comment on the process that we went through? I mean, how we would, I mean, this was sentence by sentence, word by word. Dr. Hansen doesn't want me to, but I'm gonna acknowledge that he did uh, quite a bit of work prior to the meeting to um, comb through this policy and define areas where we were not in line with state statute and then plug the state statute into those spots. And so there's a significant amount of yellow highlighting <laughs> and that, that is reflective of those changes. Um, so I guess that's where I'd start with that process. Dan, were you thinking of anything else? No, I'm just saying that this is a, what's, what we still have is what we came up with, but we are following now Wyoming state statute. And that's a never changing thing, right? Correct. Because I remember Dr. Nancy saying, well, as a poet at uh, 715, uh, this is what it is. I wouldn't expect that it would change again soon. Um, there was discussion for, for years in the legislature about revising that statute, um, and it was revised in March of last year. Um, and, and we did have some really excellent discussion about this, and ultimately the, the um, policy committee decided just just to revise the changes in statute. There's some potential other um, words here and there that could use some refinement. And upon before you get it back for a second reading, um, we, could, we could fix those up for you too. Um, it, there was another another thing that came up was. Um, I think just defi definitional information and vocabulary. I think what's reflected in this policy now is good. Um, we as administrators have a little bit of work to do to make sure that the, the vocabulary that we're using within Power School reflects um, what's policy to and what's statute. So um, that's something that we separate that we can work on. But we also want the language in this to be appropriate for any sort of database system that we would use. So like if we went away from PowerSchool, we don't want to write a policy that only matches PowerSchool. So. Okay. <laughs> so if I could, um, kind of hear part of Mr. Hans or Ms. Lambert from answer. So the one in here that just gave me a little, a little bit of heartburn was it says that you, the parent or guardian will have to notify the school within one hour of the start of the school day. And how, how strict are we going to be on that? If somebody, I mean, they're late because there's been some kind of, a, and I'm not talking a cast or uh, a big accident at home, but there's been something happening and the parent forgets. Um, what, what are your thoughts there, Charles? So we talked about this, and um, we have to set the parameters somewhere, so wherever the state statute, so there's that flexibility. But what this challenges us to do is have communication with the parent. One hour, four hours, well, one hour if the student's missing and we haven't heard from the parent, then we're calling them because what if they were in an accident? So we have to put it on the other end of the spectrum too. So that's that communication piece. So what this really does for us is parent and school communication with where their child is. That's, that's where that conversation is. The answer is yes, it's on the administrative agenda for tomorrow. 
So once this policy is approved and it's official, then the expectation is one of the things that came out of our discussion is there's some inconsistencies among schools and how we do that. So that will be one of the things that we talk about. Fair? Fair. Perfect. Gives me a second to kind of catch my breath to find out where I am. Okay, so we've had a motion and a second. We had discussion. All those in favor on the first reading to approve policy JHR. Students' absences and excuses signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Pass on first reading. As we go down, we now have a early graduation. May I have a motion to approve the early graduation request? So moved. Discussion? Just so you know, the student has met or exceeded all graduation requirements. much so. Okay, all those in favor of approving early graduation signify by saying aye. Opposed, same sign. Early graduation has been approved. Uh, we're going now to the community orchard. We have a motion to approve the KC community orchard as presented. Discussion. I think we had our discussion uh, earlier. All those in favor of approving the KC Community Orchard signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. We now have the KC Community Orchard. May I have a motion to approve the Clear Creek Soccer Program for sixth grade? This program will only be for the 2023 school year and then it will be reevaluated. Do we have any discussion on this? We had a long discussion in the work session and um, the idea that kept coming to us was this all will be reevaluated in 2020 after the 2023 um, season. soccer, but it's reminiscent of indoor track. You know, indoor track, we said one year, one year only, and the next year, here came indoor track. I think we just need to be really cognizant of the budget when it's reevaluated next year. I understand this year there's no pickup for that. There wasn't a C team coach, and that's schools utilizing their budget, how it works best for their own school. But I think that it's, that's something we need to be really aware of. It's like the Strosky has said to us many times, there's going to be come a time where we have to say no, 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 and we're not going to like it, but that's the way the world's going to have to go. Any other discussion? All those in favor for approving Clear Creek Soccer Program for sixth grade only for the 2023 season signify by saying aye. Opposed, same sign. We will have six grade soccer for the 2023 school uh, season. GM, do you want to clarify that the sixth graders can play with the seventh graders? Or not? You know, I are they, I have to ask. That's a good question. Are they only playing sixth graders against sixth graders and other teams? How's no, that work? It's six and seven one day. So we just have two teams. Between six, seven, eight. That makes sense. Yeah, it's not a sixth grade only. How many sixth graders do we have? Um, that's a good question. Uh, we're 60 some total, all three. Yeah, I 
little more buses. Yeah, that's fine. And how many sixth graders do we have for track? Do you know? Um, I'll mess that up. Yeah, I don't know that either, but 95 is a little bit. Okay, any other discussion? Okay, may I have a motion to approve the curricular resources for social studies and science? So moved. May I have a second, please? Second. Do we have any discussion? All those in favor for the uh, resources for social studies and science signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion has been approved for the curriculum resources for social studies and science. It was just those two, correct? Okay, thank you. All right, now that takes us to other business from the board. Do we have any comments from the board? Graduation. This is the fun part. We have three graduations coming up. We will have New West, May 20th at one o'clock. We will have Buffalo graduation, May 21st at four o'clock. And we will have uh, KC's graduation on May 27th at five o'clock. That's been a change. It's usually been seven o'clock, but they have uh, changed to uh, five o'clock. So, Heidi, how's the best way Raise your hand. Yeah, raise your hand if you want to. Maybe I'll just hand you each one. Sure. Hand up for me. It's kind of a tradition that we allow our parents to hand our parents on the board to hand out their student uh, diploma. It's kind of like I say, this is the good part. This is the fun part. Uh, so New West graduation. Who will be attending? I will be attending. As I said the other day. Each graduation is unique in its own way. Um, so it's a special time and every graduation is different. So did you get that? Okay. Uh, Buffalo graduation. And Casey's graduation. Okay. If you're not able to make it, just give Heidi a quick call. Life happens and sometimes things come up. So. No problem. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. uh, Mr. Mr. Hanson, because it is on here, uh, your graduation will be at the auditorium at the high school. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Just wanted to clarify. Yeah, thank you. you may outgrow that pretty fast. Okay, moving on. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Who would like to hand out the diplomas um, at uh, KC? Sure, I, I will be there. Okay. Buffalo High School. program can you give your presentation uh, we were going to be doing that in the main board meeting so this is just a hot topic after it's more session but yeah yeah any further questions but uh, we're going to be presenting at the main okay main meeting for approval of that i just had that too do you want to answer the question about the bus absolutely i can answer that question so when we talk about established routes, our buses run um, Mark Hill's home at four o'clock. Okay, 
So if their bus goes to Lynch, then then um, that bus route is already established. So if we have a student participating in the Kinder Boost, it would just be a student riding home on that established route. So we are not adding any routes to, to the situation. Um, we get visit with the parents about that to see if that is something that's feasible for them because we do realize that they're gonna be spending a lot of time driving their kiddo in for that Kinder Boost program and they were more than happy uh, to make that happen to come in. So I hope that answered the question. So this is not putting any more stress on our current bus routes. We're not adding. We are not adding. Yep, that, that would be the expectation. Four is pretty young for a bus route, especially in the K-12 school. So that will just be up to the parents. They'll be aware. That'll be their decision. Yes. Okay. Yes, and that's another piece to it is um, when we talk Kinder Boost, and of, of course we'll give this presentation at the May board meeting. But when we talk Kinder Boost, it's not a preschool situation. It's about preparing a child to enter school. And so it's a process. Um, and right now, you know, we have little kiddos, kinders that come to our school. They've never been on a bus. They've never been exposed to that. And instead of a slow warm-up process, they catch a bus at 8 a.m. in the morning, or not, something, 6, uh, 30 in the morning, and they're on the bus and then they're just sent home. And so there's not that warm-up process. And so that's what this kinder is for. Any other questions? That's great. that you talked about during that because it's a two-hour window and parents you're going to have stuff for them also so that maybe they just want to stay in town and not drive that extra time back and forth yes so um again we're getting into that that's crazy I know. but we can't hear it in the I'll be honest with you it's a month yep yeah. so Great question, and yes, so that's another reason for this Kinder Bruce program is we're gonna start hopefully um, tying into our uh, parent liaison. So we have some uh, classes that will be occurring uh, during that time that their uh, four or five year old is in Kinder Boost. So we get that piece happening. And then we also get, we're gonna wrangle them into the PT, uh, PTO. So um, they are kind of captive. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I, I was working something a little better. Like I said, we can hear the present. We can hear presentations over. It, it's very helpful, and the presentation that was given at the work session was really, really informative. So I appreciate it. All right, that leads us into. Finding a date for a special board meeting, uh, and it will be only for Ms. Connie, you want to just talk about it? So, um, that last audio, we're going to put the new producer in the budget, please. Yes, thank you. So, uh, we are currently um, enrolled with WEP, which is the Library Education Benefit Trust, and that who, that's who manages the Blue Cross Blue Shield for us. Uh, their rules are that we can only have three plans. And so, as you can see, there's probably five or six plans we can choose from. So we need to make that decision by the end of April, and that's why we need to come to you at the end of April. We still need to survey the employees as to what plans they are interested in. We still have to meet as, a, as an insurance committee to bring that recommendation to you. So the, late, the later in April that we can make that, the better, I think, so that you know, even the day before I have to sign the form would be awesome. So, so uh, April 28th is a Friday, I believe, and that's the day we have to sign. Um, and so I need that approved. Uh, we can even do it that Friday morning if you want to meet during the morning. But but um, but anyway, so the Thursday, you know, any time that week would be awesome. So, uh, what is it? Did you look at your calendars? And 
So I want to just let you as a board know, if you feel that you're going to have questions, we probably should move it earlier in the week so that we can come back and then have another meeting. So that by locking it on Thursday, we're approving it and then we're signing it on Friday. Yeah. Do you have anything for activities on that? Um, we have track away. Um, that's all. So for right now, reschedule. If we do, if we have rescheduling, we'll just work around it. Maybe we'll wait. So, what time would you like to go on that? Yeah, let's take. Let's stay at six o'clock for people who work. That'll give them time to get home. Connie, is that all right with you? Okay, so again, April 25th, 6 o'clock. Heidi, will you push out a uh, message to the board members who are not here and to all the other board members, please? 
Okay, the May work session will be May 3rd at 5.15. The regular board meeting that will be in uh, Buffalo will be May 8th at 6 o'clock. So Madam Chair, the work session uh, will consist of this traffic presentation on evaluation systems and then a majority of that will be based on budget. Anything else? We do have an executive session. So, we have a motion to enter into executive session for Wyden Statute 16-4-405. Second. We have a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you all for attending. Again, principals, I know this makes for a long day. Directors, makes for a long day, but we really appreciate you coming in. Casey's presentation, thank you all. That was very informative and we really appreciate it.